getting started on Skook's online training. A quick guide to getting you started completing Skook's online training. I'm going to show you how to log into Skook's. We'll have some videos to assist you getting started, including step-by-step -step instructions. Okay, so what is Skooks? How do you pronounce it? How do you get started? These are some common questions. Well, Skooks is an online training platform that we use, and you'll be completing many of your required trainings through this online forum. Now, the word itself, Skooks, is basically the word school, but with an X at the end instead of an L. And it is pronounced Skooks. Uh, I've shown the logo below. And the video on the next slide will explain how to get started. Okay, so now we're going to look at how to log into Skooks, our online training platform. You can log into Skooks. Um, you can put in the web address right here. I tend to put it in at the top. Uh, if you're already into your living resources email, you may have a link to skooks.com forward slash login period PHP. Um, however you get in, um, basically you type that in. Even if you're starting from the platform you're on Google, it'll bring you to this. Now I have a training account, so I'm going to change this. So you're going to type in um, your living resources email address. Now mine, again, is a training account, so it's actually through Gmail, okay, and let me, I'm going to have the same password, we're starting right at that living, one, two, three, uh, just a starter password, okay, right now, then you press login. It asks you to select your primary language right here. Um, you do have other options, um, but I'm going to choose English. If you're on a shared computer, um, press never for wanting to remember your password. Okay, I would recommend writing it down. Continue. All right, so now we have that temporary password. And I told everyone that one. That was capital L. I V I N G living one two three but now we have to create a new password all right so we left off having you entering a new password you've already put in your starter password and now you'll be prompted to change your password after you've successfully changed your password go ahead and hit that green login button. Enter that temporary password. Living one, two, three. Right? Okay, now I put the new password. And this will be a password of your choosing. Okay, go ahead and I'm going to press change. All right, and now it has gotten me into the Skooks account. Now be mindful, your password is now going to be whatever you changed it to. So that introductory password will no longer work. So now you have seen how to find Skooks online and you've logged in and changed your password. Remember your login information is as follows. Your username is your living resources email address and your password is now the password you have chosen. It's no longer going to be that starter password. One thing to note, if you put in an incorrect password three times, you will be locked out of the system for 30 minutes. 
So now I'm about to give you a virtual tour to show you how to navigate Skooks. But before you press login, once you get to the sign in page, I want to show you one other way to get there quickly. So if you're at this point, go ahead and press login. But I'm going to also just show you if you've gotten into your email first, how you can just hit the link to get to this sign in box. Lastly, just one other way you can possibly easily access your Skooks account. You may have uh, received an email from us similar to this email, and it explains a little bit about Skooks and the expectations of orientation. But just focusing on this area here, uh, we usually include a link for you to access your Skooks account. So now, I'm going to go ahead in this area I'm circling, I'm going to click on that link. And there it brings you to the Skooks login page again. Simply enter your living resources email address and your password. So now you know how to get into Skooks using either the link sent to your email or using the link on the Living Resources web page. And you can always find that link at the bottom of our main web page in the employee portal. So now you've logged on, let's finally take a look at what it's like to navigate the Skooks online platform. So you press log in. And if you notice here, um, it may display a message that says save password. If you are on a shared computer, always press never. Okay, so I'm into my training account. It says, hi, Olive Training. That's the name of this training account. Um, you'll see a message up here about confirming your email address. Um, you don't have to worry about that. You can get right to starting to take your Skooks online classes. So if you look down here, it says courses in progress. And then it says curricula in process. So basically, um, this is the first class you want to take, Intro to Training. But before you do that, I think it's important to show you the basic navigation of the site. If you didn't see this screen for whatever reason, the way you could find it, you could go to Training and you go to My Training and it'll automatically show you a list of all the classes you have to take. However, I prefer to go to training and then the drop down menu, go over here to curricula and you click on. Okay, you've clicked on curricula and it shows the two curriculums that you will be taking. So it looks like two classes, but it's actually two full curriculums. This orientation class here contains 12 courses. And then we have what's called the Quad Plus Curriculum, which contains 10 courses. So go ahead, click on Orientation. Now you're in the Orientation Curriculum. Start to slow down, and you will see the classes that you're required to take to complete your Orientation Curriculum. So at the top, we want you to start with this class, Intro to Training. It's just a basic welcome to living resources and we'll explain some of the expectations you may have on your job. Continue to work through these classes. You'll take things such as vehicle safety, learn about developmental disabilities, and I'll scroll down a little further. One thing to note, this class here, orientation and praise, step 11. There is also a research version of this course in the Quad Plus curriculum. So as a new employee, you will complete all 12 steps of the orientation curriculum. With that said, that 12th step, this class is mandatory if you're going to be taking the four-day med class. If your position does not require that you take the med class, you do not need to complete step 12. So that's something you can ask us about if you're if you're unsure, but generally if you're going into residential, if you're going to be working at one of our group homes, you will need to take this 12th class called Carasalva. Okay, so you completed these 12 classes. A lot of people think they're done with Skooks, 
But unfortunately, that is not the case. So again, to get back to that training, drop the menu, go over to curricula. All right, and it shows those two curriculums you're working on. You, let's say you've completed orientation. Okay, now you have to complete the quad plus. So we go ahead and click on that. And it brings us to our quad plus curriculum. One thing to note, the quad plus curriculum contains 10 courses. You will only complete nine of them. Step number seven, this is a research class and this is explained on your orientation schedule. So you will see the same course without the word research in the orientation curriculum. So skip step seven of the quad plus curriculum. One other class I want to make a few comments about is the Blended Learning Red Cross CPR AD and First Aid class. Uh, if you notice, we have the white background with the Living Resources logo and the American Red Cross logo. So this class, you're going to complete part of the training on Skooks, but then it is going to take you to a third party site, which is run by the American Red Cross. And that is where you will complete some training on the American Red Cross site. At the conclusion of that training, you will get a certificate of completion. It's very important to take a screenshot of that certificate of completion. Um, they will also send you an email stating that you have completed the American Red Cross portion of this blended learning training. So just be mindful and follow the instructions that we've given you on your orientation schedule. So that is the rest of the information regarding the Quad Plus curriculum. Again, to view all your training, you can go to my training. And the last thing I want to note is it does show you the progress of each class you're taking. You do not have to complete a class in its entirety. If you are doing these classes from home and you get distracted, once you pause the class, then the time clock stops. So you're not going to be paid for the time that you don't work on the class, but it's kind of nice you can pick up where you left off. Right now it shows zero progress on this class because it is a training account, but if you were to finish 50%, there would be a green line going up to here. It would say progress 50%, and this whole bar would be filled in green with 100% completed progress recorded at that point. And then you know you could go on to the next class. And feel free to bounce around if you want to take a different class at a different time. You will take between 20 and 22 classes between the two curriculums. So be mindful to get a little bit done each day because these can be time consuming. And as I'll explain later, there is a short exam or test or quiz, whatever you would like to call it, at the end of each course. So once you choose to take a class, just follow these basic steps. Step one is the lecture. After completion of the lecture and any other steps necessary for a given class, you will move on to the exam. Now most classes are only two steps, but some classes have up to four steps. And as I'll explain later, uh, there's a few classes that are slightly different. The final step in this example, step two, is the exam. I'm going to refer to it as an ex exam. They're basically just multiple choice questions, some true false questions. So you can think of it as a quiz. I don't want anybody to get test anxiety. Um, but here's what the exam looks like. So you've completed the lecture. You go to step two and you'll see in this case vehicle safety. You click on that little blue box that says start exam. And the next video will show you what the exam looks like. Okay, so we're saying you completed, in this instance, the vehicle safety lecture. That is a two-step class. So step one, you would have completed the lecture. Step two is the exam. You've pressed start the exam for vehicle safety. And you're going to uh, start with question one. It shows you here, this is a 10-question exam, test, quiz, whatever you'd like to call it. 
Um, there's no fill-ins. They're either multiple choice or true false questions. So this first one, what should you do if someone takes their seatbelt off while the vehicle is in motion? And this one happens to be a, uh, a multiple choice question. So you would choose your answer and then submit your answer. I want to choose an answer here and just submit my answer. Okay, so I'm at the ninth question. Um, just to let you know, this is a true false question. I submit my answer. I get to the last question. Um, I guess if you're paying attention, you might get an, an answer or two from this educational video on how to use Skooks. But let's go ahead, I'll submit. That was the tenth question. I submitted it. It said, You have reached the end of the exam. So now you have an opportunity to, um, you know, review your test. I made sure that uh, I passed it, but the idea is I purposely got these wrong to show you. And it shows you at the bottom, 8 out of 10. So that would be an 80, which is passing. But let's look, let's wonder, if you're in an accident, what should you do first? All right, so we were looking at this question. If you're in, involved in an accident, what should you do first? By clicking on that, I can look at that question I got wrong. Even though I passed, again, this is a vehicle safety test, I want to look. If you're involved in an accident, what should you do first? And it shows that I put call 911. Well, when you look here, you'll see it shows you that was not the correct answer. Now, I'm not going to say what the correct answer is, but let's go on to question 5. Another one that I purposely got wrong. What is the average rate that your body processes alcohol? Well, I chose a six pack a day, which is incorrect. But if you study this, you'll realize, hey, at least you know, okay, that's not going to be the answer. So it's either going to be approximately one drink per hour or six shots an hour. So these aren't questions meant to trick you. But it is important. Some of the tests will be a little harder than others, so it's important to pay attention during the lecture. And if you happen to get below an 80 on an exam, it's nice to know that you can review the exam. All right, so in this case, I've passed the exam. I'm done reviewing the questions I got wrong, so I can click Leave Exam. It says you have reached the end of the exam. Again, I can look through all those questions again. And um, I could go back and review them again if I chose to, but I've already done that. So I'm going to press Submit Exam. And then it shows me the score that I got. And then I can go on to take my other classes. After watching each training video or taking each class, there will be a test at the end of the lecture. Step one to review is watch the lecture. And remember, you can pause it and complete it at your own pace. Step two, after you have completed the lecture, you'll be prompted to take the test. And as I mentioned, there are mostly multiple choice questions and some true and false questions. The purpose is to ensure that you understand the information presented in the lecture. Step three, if necessary, is if you score less than an 80% on any given test, you will have the opportunity to retake the test. That being said, before retaking the test, I encourage everyone to review the test. I've shown in the video how to go about doing that, but it's important to look at the feedback to the questions that you answered incorrectly to ensure that you understand the material. On the right, that's another example of the class Vehicle Safety. It is a two-step class. Lecture is part one, or step one, and the exam is step two. And you notice in this example, it always keeps track of your progress. So step one is in green in this example because the lecture was completed. However, the exam has not yet been attempted, so it says pending. Once you have passed an exam, you can move on and start another class. 
Remember to complete classes within the orientation and quad plus curriculums. When you pass an exam, you'll receive feedback which shows your score. You'll also receive feedback if you do not pass an exam. In this instance, this person scored an 80% and that is considered passing. And here's an example, one more time, showing the different curriculums. There are 12 classes within the orientation curriculum and 10 classes within the quad plus curriculum. Okay, so once you've gotten into SCOOCs, you're working on the curriculums, the orientation curriculum, the quad plus curriculum. At times, when you're navigating the system, you may come across classes with this blue banner going diagonal across the corner that say purchased. These classes are not mandatory classes for you to take. And furthermore, if you take these classes, you're not going to get paid for taking them. You can take them at your own leisure if you're interested, um, but we want you to focus on taking the living resources classes that have the living resources logo, and they'll either have a white background like this, welcome, intro to training class, and this should really be the first class that you take, this intro to training. Most of our other classes have the Living Resources logo with the black background, and they will also have this gold colored ribbon that says public. So really focus on only taking the classes that have the Living Resources logo. Because again, these classes down here, if you want to take them on your own time, that's fine, but you will not be paid for taking them. With that said, if you get off track, you always can go back to training and go to curricula and you, it will get you back to the two curriculums that you're required to take as a new employee. The orientation curriculum, which has 12 courses, and the quad plus curriculum, which has 10 courses. Thank you for watching this presentation on how to use Skooks. Remember, if you have questions or difficulty logging in, if you score below an 80% on an exam and need a course reset, if you forget your password and need that reset, contact the training department. Contact information and a list of expectations can be found in your orientation schedule. Everyone has received an orientation schedule as it has been emailed to you. Remember, you may not be able to start your new position until you have completed your mandatory training, both online and or any other job-specific or program-specific training. Some training may not be online training. You may be required to complete some in-person training. Remember to contact your supervisor to work out your schedule. And remember, you may have restrictions until your training is complete. Good luck completing your Skooks online training, and welcome to Living Resources.